So there was an interesting back and forth that happened on Twitter between Jonathan Chait and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Now, this is Jonathan Chait. I have to say up front, not a big fan. Not a big fan. I find him kind of like a banal, um, you know, kind of standard Democrat. Um, he's just, ideologically, he's just not, he's not in agreement with me, in alignment with me. He's, I find him also pretty boring. His takes are pretty silly. But anyway, I digress. So... Jonathan Chait said the following, I don't think this rhetoric by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is for millennials per se. I think it's for products of elite universities. Now, here's what he's citing. This is from her speech at the DNC. She talked about a mass people's movement working to establish 21st century social, economic, and human rights. She called for that movement to recognize and repair the wounds of racial injustice, colonization, misogyny, and homophobia, and reimagine systems of immigration and foreign policy that turn away from the violence and xenophobia of our past. These are all lines that are standard fare on the millennial left, but would never get past a Biden speechwriter. So again, he said, I don't think this rhetoric by AOC is for millennials per se. I think it's for products of elite universities. So basically he's saying like the kind of language that she's using there is actually not common among millennials or working people. The kind of language that she's using there is more of almost like an elite academia lingo. That's the point he's making. Now she responds and says the following. If you believe people have to go to an elite university to know what racism, classism, and xenophobia are, Maybe that is a reflection of your class race experience more than it is anyone else's. Working class people are just as perceptive as the privileged, oftentimes more so. So this kind of sparked um, a debate on Twitter. Now, you know, I'm more in left-wing circles, so what I was seeing was a lot more agreement with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and people dunking on Jonathan Chait. Now, I want to bring up Bhaskar Sankara of Jacobin. He had an interesting point. I want to tell you what he said. He said, I hate to say it, but I found I found these lines to be really jargony, talking about AOC. It's not that working people don't know what these words mean, but AOC is so much more powerful when she speaks to day-to-day experiences and emotions rather than just list things. She's too great an orator for this. So that's what Boscar said. Um, now, there's a reason why we're talking about this. Because I actually think that this is one of those issues that is, like, one of the most important. And it's not talked about nearly enough. But, look, generally speaking, I need the left to try a hell of a lot harder to be less insular. Now listen, I'm not I'm I re- I seriously don't like Jonathan Chait. I don't. I th- <laughs> I think he's boring, banal, stale. I don't agree with him most of the time, okay? But what he's touching on here is is it real? Yeah, it is. And and in my experience, what I see from lefties is they love to preach to the choir. They love to do the in-group signaling. To let other lefties know, like, we're all part of this thing, right? We part of this thing? Oh, yeah, we're part of this thing. And so they have certain words that they use, and it's really, the left is really comfortable, and they're in a position where they're an edgy subculture, and a lot of people take comfort and find identity in something like that. It's self-actualization. Hey, I found finally found a place for me in this world. The place for me is in, in my group of uh, of fellow lefties. We have our little edgy subculture where we poke fun at everybody else and, and we have a good time with each other. And listen, that's all fine and dandy for what it is. But let's be very clear that that is at odds with getting power in the country and actually getting our ideas implemented. You can be a permanent edgy subculture, or you can become the dominant governing majority and actually win on policy. And, you know, my idea is I want to do that. I want to get Medicare for all. I want to end the wars. So what am I getting at? Listen, I know this is a long roundabout way of getting to it, but if you can say something 
in two sentences instead of three paragraphs, say it in two sentences. Don't say it in three paragraphs. If you can find a way to avoid all of the new sociological leftist terminology that has become pervasive in academia, by all means do it. There's not a single working person who casually uses the term intersectional in conversation. They don't do it. They don't. You're kind of dating yourself if you use that. Now, AOC did not use that. I want to be clear. So I'm not taking a shot at her here. Um, but there are lefty types who love to throw that around. Now, some of the terms she used, yes, everybody knows what misogyny and homophobia is and all that stuff. Um, but like colonialism, when you throw around colonialism, there's always, there's a way to make arguments that appeal to everybody, number one, but number two, even have a chance of converting people who are your enemies. And you should always be, co if you're in politics, you should always be cognizant of basically trying to talk to people even who are your biggest skeptics. Because a good politician not only keeps their base happy, which they do, that's very important, but they also win over people who don't agree with them to their way of thinking. And the way the left functions today, it's decidedly the opposite of that. There is a very big problem with lefties being insular and not realizing that like, oh, this is why you never get anywhere. This is why, you know, even though the American people agree with us on almost every issue, we don't have nearly enough people in Washington, D.C. Now, yes, a lot of that is corruption. A lot of that is big money. A lot of that is a timing issue. We haven't been organized for long enough to really make a good run at it. But there are also very clear problems in terms of our lingo, how we approach these things. And I, I really want to fix that. So instead of talking about, we need to redress the grievances of the legacy of colonialism, here's what you say. End every single offensive war that we're engaged in. That's it. Get out of Iraq. Get out of Afghanistan. Stop drone bombing innocent people. That's what you say. Now, guess what? We just said the same thing. End colonialism. End the war. End the offensive wars where we're killing civilians. We just said the same thing. One of those things is going to get 75% of people to agree to it. The other one is going to get 42%. Why on earth would you pick the thing that gets you 42% approval? There's only one reason to do it. The in-group signaling to other lefties. I'm with you. Are you with me? Oh, yeah, I'm with you. I'm totally... I'm, I'm going to use our I'm gonna use our internal lingo. You ready for me to use our internal lingo? Okay, totally use that internal lingo. It's so great when you do that. <laughs> for the love of God, we got to win. In order to win, you have to connect with regular people. In order to connect with regular people, you have to... You have to almost rise above the cultural bullshit that's so pervasive in today's day and age. And I know it's tough to make the arguments of like, you gotta be better than that, because there's people on the Republican side are not better than that. But if you really wanna win, you pick your battles. And you should pick your battle, you should always lead with the things that people already agree with you on, and frame it in a way that make them agree with you even more. Politics is not rocket science, guys. It's not. And so, Listen, I don't want to, I don't think Jonathan Chait is making a great point because this isn't like she was throwing around intersectional or, or other terms that are really deep in that, in that bubble. Um, but there is a broader point to be made here about how the left almost handicaps itself to make sure that we never appeal to a broader audience. And I really do want to change that. I really do want to fix that. And I think the solutions are really simple. You know, if the left were to go all in on Medicare for all, living wage, ending the wars, frame these things in a way that highlights the populist in populist progressive, you're going to get such a crushing governing majority and you're going to have the overwhelming support of everybody that, you know, you're basically you get to a point where they can't even straw man you successfully. And unfortunately, I think oftentimes lefties kind of casually walk on minefields and give their enemies so much help. So much help. Again, you should craft arguments in a way 
that would even appeal, that will hold your base for sure, but also appeal to those who are skeptical of you. And I basically see the opposite on the left nowadays, and I really hope we can get past it, man. I really do. Don't be afraid to talk like a normal freaking person. Be as normie as you can possibly be, because you know what? Most people are normies. So if you want to, if, if, now listen, if your whole thing about politics is no, I don't, I don't care about the actual end goals of ending the wars and giving people a living wage and getting health care. If you're not in it for that, fine. Then who am I to tell you not to, you know, act how you're acting and not to be your, your niche little click edgy subgroup. If that's the whole point and you're acknowledging to yourself, yes, this is what I want to do, then that's fine. Then go ahead and do that and it is what it is. But, you know, I'd like to think most of the people on the left actually do care about the end goals more than anything else. And if that's the case, why would you not try to make things sound appealing and normal and not like super ap academic and up your own ass? You know, I see no... One of my biggest pet peeves is when I think people are not making the argument they believe in and not talking from the heart. But they're saying the thing that they think they're supposed to say. I think that gets under my skin more than anything else because I could smell it from a mile away. I could see it. You could see it. Those kinds of comments, they, they drip with that. You know what I mean? Like it, it drips with, oh, you're just doing the thing where it's like, you know, you're like Boscar said, you're listing things. I will list left wing things and use all the left wing buzzwords. Okay, well. Have fun preaching the choir from now until the end of time, but I really want to get some serious W's in terms of policy, and the way to do that is to take the opposite approach and sound as normal as possible while not giving an inch on your actual values.